Behold, we have an artful box and we are back on time. everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we have the Artful Quarterly subscription box here. It was rebranded a couple of boxes ago as an art school in a box. So I am very interested to see what is in here as a, a day one or a legacy subscriber. I imagine I'll have seen some of the contents of this box before and I'm very interested to see how they have put this together and sort of remarketed it in this art school in a box format. If you would like an artful box, you can head to the link down in the description. They do sell them individually. You don't necessarily have to take a quarterly subscription, but it works out cheaper if you do. So you can go and check out the website there. I really like these boxes because I feel like they're really meaty. They're very substantial compared to the monthly boxes, which makes sense because they only come every three months. And I always think they're really good quality. And so far, the products that Artful have provided have been have been very good quality and it's been their own branded stuff. So let's uh, take a wee look in here. These inserts are really handy for uh, taping down A5 watercolour paintings. Just something that I keep them for. Okay, uh, so let's see what's in here. Oh, I'm excited, right, okay. So uh, we've not seen these for, for a box or two. I don't think there was none in the last box. These are the Artful own brand um, blank greetings card. Artful is part of uh, Odeer, which is the parent company, and they, they invest heavily and have a lot of contracts and greetings cards. So this is kind of like um, a nod towards that. These are really good quality, and uh, I like to have a couple in my arsenal in case I forget a birthday or something. Uh, they do come with craft envelopes, as well so yeah nice to have some of them and the paper takes most media quite well as well okay uh we have got some acrylic or more black acrylic paint oh my god i have got so much black acrylic paint it's a joke i'm gonna do i've got a massive canvas there that i bought because it was on sale and it's never had uh, it's never had a, a job and now it has a job and it's going to be something in black because i've now got three of these <laughs> okay uh, so we've got varying acrylic paints here all nice. Uh, I have got more acrylic paint than I can shake a stick at, so we'll probably be putting those in the stash shop once we are finished with um, whatever it is we need them for. That'll be okay. So we've got we've got red, blue, yellow, and black, and we've also got things in here. I'm really hoping this is ink because it's a glass bottle, or it feels like a glass bottle. Oh no! Oh no! It's masking fluid again. If we're going mixed media, that kind of makes sense. So again, artful branded masking fluid. Stain free and latex free. I bet you it still stinks. I'll bet you any money. Uh, we'll be trying that out. This is something. This might be ink because this is like a dropper bottle. This is terribly exciting. Not only is it acrylic ink, but it's neon orange. I'm pretty sure the uh, the, the the light balance in the camera is going to make that look less offensive than it really is. But that would burn a hole in your eyeballs. Uh, okay, I really, really enjoyed the artful acrylic ink. I ended up painting a rooster, I think, when we had the acrylic ink box. If I can find the link to that video, I'll link it in the description for you. So, okay, we've we've got paint, we've got mask, we've got acrylic paint, we've got masking fluid, and we've got acrylic ink. And we have some Artful Mixed Media paper. These pads are great, and this is a lot of paper. There's 25 sheets in here, and I use their mixed media pad for quite a lot of stuff, actually, uh, to the point where I've actually had to go and buy extra ones. I also like their cartridge paper as well, so I'm, I'm really glad. And do you know the thing that's really nice about these boxes? I'm so used to the monthly subscription boxes where it's usually A5 or a square format that's smaller than A5, so it fits in the box. It's really nice to have A4 paper. See if you're just to kind of have a brain fart and you know experiment you've got a bit more space to do that so i really enjoy that and if you're feeling really adventurous you can open it out and you can you know you have the two pages end to end and you can get a bit of panorama going on there so i like the fact that we get these great big pads i think that's really good value for money uh, we've got a voucher for small uh, laundry pods as well i think i'll pass on those and yeah as i as i hoped oh oh my goodness we've got some pencils in here we've had a casualty which I'm not surprised because they are just loose in the box. They were just in this little gap there. Uh, they, they're, you know, they're held in by this, but they're going to get rattled about that was going to happen. Um, I'm imagining as well that these pencils will all be colours that were in the set that we got in the coloured pencil box, which we've already had. Denim, emerald, lemon yellow, sunflower, plum and fairy. Plum fairy. <laughs> I 
just need one called sugar and slot it in there. Right, okay, so we've got quite a nice selection of very bright colours. I like that a lot. And I like that they've moved away from some of the colours of the acrylic paint as well, which is nice. So we're going to have to try and sharpen that and rescue the emerald pencil, which is fine. We should be able to do that. We've also got a graphite pencil here and it is a 4H. So that is a, a sketching, a drafting pencil, which will leave you a very fine, tidy line. Okay, so as far as the mixed media box goes, that's fairly impressive. We have acrylic ink, we have acrylic paint, we have masking fluid, we have coloured pencils as well. Um, would have been nice to maybe have had a fine liner in there. Uh, that would have been cool. Uh, and or some watercolour, but... But, 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 excellent set of supplies. We will be testing some of these out in just a little while. What I do want to do, I'm, I'm really, I really hate masking fluid. Like, I hate it with the fire of a thousand suns. But I'm, I'm trying to sort of gauge in my mind how whiffy I think this is going to be because this is not the same masking fluid that they had last time. Or if it is, it's been rebranded into their own packaging. The one that we had before, I'm sure was Dale or Rowney, but it was produced exclusively for Artful. Not entirely sure about that, and I have since uh, disposed of it. But anyway, we shall test these things out in just a moment. The other thing that we've got here is some more paint brushes, and uh, we have a number eleven, and I'm assuming this is a filbert because it looks fairly rounded there at the top. But so that's transit glue, and we've also got a number two round, which I'm pretty sure we've already had one of those in a previous box. Again, if you're a subscriber, you might be doubling up on brushes here. Let's just have a wee investigation, shall we? <laughs> Let me see. I've got a number three, which is smaller than the number two, which is interesting. So I don't know what's happened there. Um, um. Uh, so yeah, already got one of these. Oh, this might be the same brush. Yes, it's the same brush. Okay, so we're starting to double up on paint brushes now, which is very interesting indeed. I may switch these out. If I decide to switch these out, these will already be in the stash shop because a couple of days ago, I will have put up a selection of my used brushes at really cheap prices. So I might switch these out for the used ones and keep the new ones for myself and put these used ones in with the rest. You can check those out on the stash shop. Uh, here's the address you can go to. The live link that takes you straight there is down in the description and it'll be underneath the link to the Artful website. So you can check that if you so desire. We're not quite ready to test out supplies because one of the really great things about this box is it comes with this magazine and this for me makes the box. So let's learn about mixed media and other stuff. And this artwork on the front is absolutely gorgeous. So here we go, uh, and at the front, this is the bit about uh, artful, the artful bump. Okay, there's a little bit here on what mixed media actually is as well. Oh, I just love what they've done with this magazine. I had a really nice chat with a gentleman called Tom, and Tom works for Artful. Uh, I think he's, he, I can't remember his official title, that's so rude, but I think he's in charge of like design and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, if you're... I know Tom's going to watch this as well. He's going to be like, God's sake, she didn't listen to me. I absolutely love what they've done with the layout of this magazine. It's very orderly and clean, and that really, really appeals to me. And I know it was Tom's doing, so um, I hope you all appreciate it too, because it's it's much nicer than some of the chaotic layouts we've seen, not necessarily with Artful, but in some of the other magazines. Oh, great. Anyway, yes, so everything's all split into nice sections, eh? Um, brief history of mixed media. Again, this is the bit where you sit down with your cup of tea and chill out and actually learn something. And then we've got the list of supplies here. So these are 100ml pots of acrylic paint, uh, each of the primary colours in black. This way you can make a range of other colours. These are highly light fast. Do you know what I've noticed as well? They've taken out the recommended retail price of some of these items as well, which um, I don't think is a positive or a negative, but it's just something that I've noted. The neon ink, you can dilute the ink with water and happily mix it with other colours. Yes, I will most likely be mixing it with something else. Oh, here we go. Got you sorted out already. Artful F pencil. It's not an F. We've established it's a 4H, so F for fail. And uh, yeah, not that that makes much difference. I like an F pencil. It's my favourite grade of pencil for sketching and what I tend to use. If I don't have one to hand, I'll, I'll just, I'll be like, yeah, yeah whatever. Like HB, fine. Uh, sorted colouring pencils, an incredibly vibrant selection of oil-based colouring pencils. I really like the artful colouring pencils and I tend to gravitate towards oil-based pencils, which is probably why I like them. Uh, but Artful did a really good job with these. 
Filbert paintbrush and two number two round premium paintbrushes, synthetic fibres and produce pin sharp detail. Masking fluid. <laughs> when the product dries, it creates a waterproof barrier to stop paint from reaching the paper. This masking fluid contains latex. It says on the jar, latex free. Guys, I have a sensitivity to latex. This is not acceptable. Right, I, I'm, I'm actually going to send an email to... I'm going to stop what I'm doing right now and send an email to Artful because I'm, this is not cool. Okay, I have sent an email to Artful. Hopefully by the time I'm finished filming this, I'll have a reply. That would be really cool. I would take it as that this contains latex. The fact that they've put it in bold in the magazine suggests that it was possibly too late to deal with the label situation and easier to edit the magazine instead. But I, I will confirm that for you if I can. If I can't, uh, it will probably be confirmed by the time this goes live. So what I'll do is I'll put it in the top line of the description. Um, you know, I'll just put a little notice in there for you if you need to check that out or just want to check that out. The Mixed Media Art Pad. Yes, very good. Um, love it. It takes more or less anything within reason. It's just it's fa fairly, fairly good stuff. Fairly good stuff. And uh, as always, this very magazine. <laughs> See pages 10 to 13 for the basics and to learn more about your materials. So they're signposting you to the correct destination, which just happens to be over the page, unsurprisingly. So uh, there's a little bit here. This is a medium body acrylic paint. Quick drying, yes, it's very quick drying, which is great if you're wanting to work over the top of it. And once it's dry, it is water resistant, which obviously explains that it's acrylic paint. It can be watered down because it's water based. Uh, you can dilute it with water as well if you want something a bit more delicate. The acrylic inks, I really enjoyed. And I, they're basically just a waterier, like a thinner version of these paints. But you don't lose the vibrancy of them. And because they're, they come in slightly smaller quantities, uh, they're, I, I find that the inks are just less cumbersome than traditional acrylic paint. And I quite like them for that. Pencils. These pencils contain superior pigments of unsurpassed light fastness and colour brilliance. Well, the oil base makes them suitable for it with a wide variety of surfaces and materials, including all forms of paper and card. We've got our brushes. So they're basic. Well, they're kind of going back over. You know, like we kind of know this already. Included in this mixed media box, you can find a, a texture and photo resource zine. You can use the disk directory of imagery and textures for your collage work. I think they said. Oh, it's in the back. It's at the back. Okay, right, we'll look at that. This is it. <laughs> Basics. Okay, so um, keep your pencils nice and sharp. Yes. Swatch everything. Always. Clean your pots. And this is um, if you're, uh, you're, you get paint down in the, in the creases. Jeez, oh. In the threads. Oh, well, look at this. It's like Draco. In the threads here of these pots, your your lids won't go on properly because like, the paint will dry and it'll build up. Take a photo. When making a collage, take a photo before you glue anything down. This means when you glue everything down, you can keep referring to it. Yeah, because obviously you need to take things apart to stick things down. That's a really good piece of advice. Watering down acrylic, layering up ink and acrylic paint. Underpainting. Now, I don't talk about underpainting very often. It's a great technique for creating lots of depth to your work and it's really simple. Just paint a base layer of a different colour. Then once it's dry, paint it again with a different colour. Depending on the thickness of the second coat, the effect can be very subtle or vibrant. Relief mark making. That's it. Just where you, you scrape a pencil. You'd have done this as a kid with coins and things. Um, you put something under your paper and then you scribble your pencil over the top and the embossed part sort of pokes through. Uh, See, so it was always coins at school I remember doing it with. So look, they're giving you some really sound basic information here. I like that. And here we have some of our artists now and they do these interviews and we get to see a lot of their work. And this is one of the reasons I like this magazine as well, because it's a thicker magazine, there's more room to play with this kind of stuff. We get to see more of the artist's artwork instead of maybe just one or two pictures. So this is Melissa and she's from California. Look, this is amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Very good. <laughs> Very stylized artwork, it's great, it's so nice. We have Adriana. I see now this is more like collage work. She does a lot of um of cutting out and sticking down, which is really clever. Like oh, I love this. I'm a little bit jealous of this just because uh, for me sitting with scissors for any length of time to cut things out is really hard on my, my injured hand and I find it really painful eventually and it stiffens my hand up so I'm always quite envious of this because obviously she's cutting out individual things and then putting them back together. These are these are really good. Lots to look at. Sketch a day notebooks. 
and the daily drawing challenge. If you're ever looking for inspiration for your little sketchbook, you can head over to the hashtag Artful Daily Challenge on Instagram and they provide um, not only a subject for you to draw on a daily basis, but lots of inspiration in the form of other people that have done it. They post loads of pictures so you can see what everyone else has been doing too. And here is Terry. Oh, we've got a folded over page. Oh no. Was that intentional? I've got a magazine malfunction because there's another page in there. Actually stuck together. Right, hang on. Well, this is interesting. <laughs> this, this has never happened before. Yeah, I think, um, because this is open at the top, it's, I think it's just not cut properly. So let me just... <laughs> Bad DIY here on the old uh, subscription boxes. My knife's not very sharp either. I've been hacking away at big, thick cardboard boxes with this knife. Oh. There we go. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm kind of tempted just to leave that there, actually. <laughs> I'll just keep it. It's fine. So anyway, this is this is Terry, and she looks as if she does uh, uses a bit of paper crafting here for her artwork. Is I'm sorry, I can't. This is very distracting. Yeah, she looks. She's cut out bits from. Um, books and everything. These are lovely. I, lo I love this really stylized artwork. It's it's really nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, they got cat hairdos as well. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah, this is really good. I like that a lot. And we've got someone called the Jenny. And Je well, Jenny uses texture. Jenny likes texture. More sort of abstract art. Those big canvases, well, look, she's crouched down in the flat some big canvases. That's so cool. I just can't be doing with any of that because mine, every single artwork that I created would have a pippy hair in it, at least. It's super cool. I, I can't, I can't get my head, I was actually reading an article on abstract art last night and I just can't, like, I can't get my brain to do it. Like, I, I, my brain's far too regimented and I think that's my science brain kicking in. Um, I wish I could create and compose something like this that looked like it was supposed to look like that. It's not not an easy thing to do. I love the colours in this as well. Look at the size of that. I would hang that up somewhere, definitely. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Lots of bright colours as well. Inspiration walk in London. I kind of like that idea as well. Um, my my type of inspiration walks uh, is very, very different from this. Um, obviously, I stay in a very rural area. So equally as inspirational, just very, very different subject matter, one would suggest. Winchester Pie. Yeah, there's lots of architecture here. This is nice. I love visiting London. I, I used to go to London a lot um, for long weekends. We used to be able to get really cheap flights, flights from Presswick Airport. Uh, Ryanair would get you down for like one pound twenty, and then you had the taxes on top of it, so it was about twenty quid. Uh, but we used to go down for long weekends all the time. So yeah, I actually know my way around. For a country bumpkin, I know my way around London pretty well, and I'm pretty good at the underground as well. Yeah, the Oxo Tower, <laughs> been there done all that. I actually just find it to be a really inspirational place full stop. Again, not being a city dweller, um, there's a lot of culture and just a, like a really big hodgepodge of lots of different things and I just, I find it a very inspirational place indeed. And the National Theatre makes me laugh because it's probably the most unimaginative and uncreative building. It is such an ugly building. Um, the inside's good though. <laughs> St Paul's Cathedral as well, that's that's quite something when you're up close to it. You don't realise how big the dome is until you're standing beside it, it's, it's quite something. Okay, we have someone called Jack here and, uh, oh my goodness, look at this. This is very, very abstract. That's very cool though. Ones to follow, so these are people who, who work in this discipline. Julie is a French illustrator and artist living in Berlin. These are nice, I like this. Lord and Andrew Carter as well. Okay, you can check them all out on Instagram. So this is a mixture of textiles, paintings, wall hangings. Oh, nice. It just goes to show you with, with this magazine alone, it challenges your perception of certain mediums. I think they do a really good job of encompassing all different types of arts created with these types of supplies. Um, the fact that they have encapsulated, you know, uh, the tapestry side of things, like the textile side of things, I really, really like that as well. Um, this is really cool. How to photograph your work at home. Now, there is an absolutely excellent piece of advice. I should probably read this because I am terrible at taking photographs. Um, removing harsh shadows, turn off the lights. <laughs> that depends on how dark your room is. If you're in a big, gloomy farmhouse like me, that is not advisable. <laughs> I've got every 
daylight on in here just now. Oh, that's funny. Uh, and here's someone else that, that creates very vibrant and bright artwork as well. This is cool. This is a lot. The, these are in our sketchbook as well. These are bright. Wow, these are bright. <gasps> We're into the tutorials and the first one's a cat in a bush. I can't. <laughs> so, love it. Ah, oh, right, okay, so this is more of a paper craft type. So they're saying that this is a beginner skill level, it's going to take about an hour. Oh, this is, I don't know why this has tickled me so much, but it has. Ah, oh, that's funny. Right, okay, so that, <laughs> that's really nice. Transgalactic collage, and this is also beginners. So this is using the imagery um, from the magazine, the, the texture zine, which we're going to look at once we've finished in here. This is a lot of cutting out. My hand would not like this at all. Um, but it looks really, really cool. Glue, glue and glue. Yeah, okay, we get that. Colour, block and collage. So again, another beginner's project. Um, this time incorporating more paint and pencil. Floral still life. Advanced? Nah. Yeah, so this one's talking more about ink and paint, which um, obviously, yeah. Using maybe some masking fluid as well, one would think. But yeah, okay, so that's incorporating more of the paints. This is a really difficult box to put a magazine together for. Like, it really is. Oh my goodness, look at him. Oh, I want to do this one. I want to do this one. Look at him. He's freaking adorable. Yes. He's my favourite. This one's my favourite. I absolutely want to do this just because it uses cardboard and as a turtle. Okay, nice. Um, I do believe I saw a fork. Yes, there's a fork being used as well. Absolutely wonderful. Shell, yeah. <laughs> Bit of artful humour there, love it. There's no intermediate. Did I miss that? Advanced. Advanced. Beginner. Okay, right, so there's no intermediate tutorials this time. Uh, as I say, I think this is a really difficult box to provide tutorials for. I love the fact that they've included this here. And it's basically just a collection of stuff that you can cut bits out of. Which is just marvellous, absolutely marvellous. It's some really bright colours as well and, you know, lots of monochromatic stuff so that you can use your, um, you know, your, your items here as your contrast and get really nice pops of colour. Like, I love the fact that they've done that. I'm really drawn to this for some reason, I don't know why. Um, and also this picture of this train as well. Yeah, there's some there's some really good stuff in here. Really good stuff. Okay, well, what an interesting box. Okay, just before we jump into testing out the supplies, I have had an email back from Tom at Artful about the masking fluid. Um, hi, Gem. Yes, we've had this question a few times. So what that tells me is if, if, if people are already asking the question, the information that they have provided is not clear. Some people, some people will have received a masking fluid with latex and some without. If you have the Artful branded masking fluid, which says latex free on the label, which is what we said, then it is latex free. So this one, the Artful branded one does not have any latex in it. Some people have received the Dale or Rowney one, which does contain it. That's the one that I was talking about from one of the older boxes. So there was obviously some of that left over. So the Dale or Rowney masking fluid has latex in it. The Artful branded one does not. We did put labels on the bottles that contain latex with a warning, which was the Dale or Rowney one. But I thought it best to put the warning in the magazine just to be safe. Strangely, Dale or Rowney don't put warnings on their bottles as legally they don't have to. Hopefully that clears things up. Tom. Yeah, thanks Tom. That's great. <laughs> right, so now you know, if you have, if you do have this box and you have the artful labelled bottle, you have latex free masking fluid, which makes me really happy because my skin does not like latex. And if you have the Dale or Rowney masking fluid, it has got latex in it. So if you do have a sensitivity or an allergy, best put some gloves on before you use that. Obviously not latex gloves. Fnarf, fnarf, fnarf. Oh, I can't help myself, can I? <sighs> Okay, there, there's no point in destroying a new pad because I've already got one that's, um, you know, in use, so to speak. This will go to the bottom of the pile, you know, a bit of stock rotation. <laughs> I go through this paper fairly quickly though, so it's always good to have. Yeah, so you can see that this one's been through the wars. Right, so let's start with the pencil. Um, this, this is a 4H, not an F, as stated in the magazine. So you can see there... It's a really fine line, and that's about as dark as you're getting. So this is a this is a great sketching pencil, and like a drafting pencil, just for getting yourself sorted out. And again, being an H pencil, it won't smudge much. 
so you don't have to worry about transfer whereas if it was a 4B there would be stuff everywhere by now so yeah that's going to do the job uh, with these pencils the the factory sharpening like see with this flat top this drives me absolutely crazy I can't stand it so I'm just going to nip the tops off of these um, and we've got the, the emerald pencil to rescue so that's a really good way of determining how, how well these sharpen there my yellow's broken as well. This is what happens when you don't pad out pencils when you send them in the post. For those of you that have bought pencils from me from the stash shop, you will know that they're, they're usually in a bubble pack envelope, you know, like the, the male light ones that have got like a coating of bubble wrap inside them. But I sometimes strap them to a bit of cardboard as well just to stop them rattling about because there's nothing worse than buying pencils and this happening and you end up losing the first like quarter of your pencil because it's been rattled about in the post. Crumbly, crumbly. So that one's been in the wars as well. Now this is, um, I would just like to point out, this is actually nothing to do with the quality of the pencils. This is the packaging. This is what's causing this. Right, okay, that seems fairly stable. So uh, out of six pencils, half of them are, are a casualty. Um, so we're going to try and sort that out. These three, oh no, I'm telling you, absolute lies. That's, oh. <laughs> Okay, that's all of them. Well, well, we've got some work to do here. So that's every every single one bar one has a broken core. So let's see if we can rescue these. I wasn't expecting to do this in the unboxing. That now this this sharpener that I'm using here, this Tagal multi sharpener for my regular viewers, you will be used to this. And um, this uh, lets you adjust the setting to adjust the type of point that you get on your pencil. So a number one is a really short, stubby point. It's really fat like this and a number five is a much longer skinnier point. So when you have problems with breakages in pencils, the shorter and fatter your triangle is, the more sturdy it is, therefore it's less likely to break. So I've got this sharpener on a number one setting and I'm just going to see if I can get a little stubby point on them. Um, just to begin with to see if we can get them going because um, the downside obviously to having a stubby point is it wear down, wears down really quickly because it's short. I get worn down quickly because I'm short. <laughs> ah. so there we go do you see what i'm saying though but it's when you've got a, a compromised lead like that it's you can get a safe point on that um, and that I, i'm fairly confident that that is sturdy and that's not going to crumble um just by keeping it much shorter so you can see the difference there between what i would call a normal pencil point and one of these little short stubby points that's what i'm going to do with the rest of these pencils to try and rescue them so here's where we're at the fairy pencil has a really offset core. You can see how much of the core is exposed here. And if I turn it over, how far up the wood casing comes. Um, that just happens sometimes. But it has given me a much steadier core. Um, I've managed to get a fairly good point on these three. And obviously that was the one that was fine, that was uninjured. The um, the denim blue, I've got, I've got half a core. Can you see like there's a side missing off it? For the purposes of swatching out, that's going to be fine. But I might have to try and rescue that. As I said, this is actually nothing to do with the quality of the pencils. It's to do with the fact that they've not been padded out when they have been posted. Because let's face it, if you bang your head, you're going to be okay. But it's still hard doesn't it whereas if you bang your head and you've got a helmet on it's not going to hurt quite as much i suppose it depends how hard you bang it. okay bad analogy never mind <laughs> right let's have a look at these colors because that's what we came for i i love these pencils because they're really soft see see for oil pencils they're they're really really nice um and you get a really nice lay down with them like you don't have to work hard for vibrancy and here is the sunflower i mean i'm, I'm not proud that is like a very light pressure there and uh, because they're oil-based as well, oil-based pencils are really good for building up layers. Here is Fairy. Look at this. Really nice range of cheery colours here. Like, I like this a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. And here is Plum. Oh, and there goes the denim. Okay, better. Da -da -da. Try again. Yes, right, we're off this time. Look at these colours all together. They're just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And here is the emerald. <laughs> oh. This is a stunning colour as well. Right, there we go. Yeah. Pencils are great. Like, they're they're absolutely fabulous. Love the colours. And uh, I just want to show you, uh, if I just take the orange and the yellow, because uh, the orange, the pink and the yellow here, because they're two colours that are quite easy to, um, to work with here. If I just overlap these a little bit, and if you watch this section in the middle, you can see that I am going to start creating a, a really nice shade of orange just shortly. And this is what I mean about layering them up. This is absolutely the wrong paper to be doing this on. Um, you would want kind of smoother paper for this. But you can see there that I'm starting to create a nice orange colour, and that's just with a layering technique. 
And see, that's oil-based pencils are great for this. Not on really, really knobbly mixed media paper right enough, but you can keep going and keep going and keep going. Um, and also these uh, these blend out quite well as well, like they burnish out by themselves quite well. So yeah, there's that aspect to them, so I'm totally up for that. Let's try this horrendous masking fluid, which actually, I'm, I bet you it stinks. Oh, absolutely rank. <laughs> it's got that proper masking fluid smell. Okay, um, just to try this out, I have got a little rubber tipped brush here. These are more commonly used for nail art, but I've noticed that in normal art they're becoming more popular. So this is, um, they're usually made of silicon the tips and I've got one with like a little angle on it. And this is really good for applying masking fluid because masking fluid will wreck your paintbrushes if you don't clean it off very very thoroughly so either use an old paintbrush or you can grab one of these uh, i do have some of these that i can put in the stash shop but they're a lot bigger than this and they're glittery as well because they're, they're meant for nail art uh, i might pop them up in the stash shop for you but what i'm going to do is here i just want to spread out and cover an area because we obviously want to test to see how well this masking fluid is going to work and just from what i'm doing here the coverage seems to be fair Really good and consistent some of them can be a bit kind of lumpy um, and some of them don't cover very well at all you know you feel as if you've not got enough on but if you put too much on it doesn't dry properly um, it's a really tricky business I have found myself the very odd time that I need to use it um, the, using the the schminke like squeezy tube one that's got a really fine point on it um, I like that one because it's blue as well so you can see where you're laying it down um, because if you're working on white paper with white masking fluid not ideal right so you can see there hardly any of that has stuck to the end of this so um, that's easily cleaned off just on a rag here as well and we don't have to worry about damaging our paint brushes so I highly recommend this and um, they usually come in big packs is the problem don't stick your nose in that either it's absolutely revolting uh, they they are full acrylic ink this is going to be offensive oh yes it is oh <laughs> I'm going to squeeze some onto my palette here as well oh my word <laughs> and I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm just going to uh, plonk a little bit of water down beside it here and um, because I want to try and dilute it a little bit but if I mix in with some water see yeah Still offensive, but at least it's not going to burn a hole in your eyeballs. Um, so we can do quite a lot with that. See, so it's quite versatile and you will be able to mix this in with your acrylic paint as well, which um, we'll maybe try a little bit of just for funsies. Okay, uh, let's try the let's try the acrylic paint now. <laughs> this paint is, it's, I feel the word I would use to describe the artful acrylic paint, paint is generous. It feels very luxurious and silky and I just, oh... Like it's so nice, so, so nice. It's, it, I would say it behaves like a more like a heavy body paint, honestly, um, which I'm not mad about <laughs> at all. Do you see what I mean? Like a look at the peak on that, medium body. <laughs> okay, <laughs> absolutely lovely. So thick, so, so thick. Um, just to show you as well, uh, let's see what happens when we take a little bit of this blue proportions here and mix it in with this orange thing. So that's given us like a, I, I would say that's almost like a fox bar brown there. Okay, nicely done. My masking fluid's not quite there yet. Come on now, give it a waggle. Most of the acrylic paint that I work with is either the student grade Windsor & Newton paint or the Daler Rowney System 3 acrylic. And uh, I find that the Windsor & Newton uh, Galleria acrylic dries really quickly and I feel I always feel quite sort of rushed when I'm using it. This one, it still dries quickly but it takes a little bit longer so you don't feel as if you're being pushed along quite as much. Um, which again for me is preferable because I kind of like to take my time. I am not a quick painter. Oh, I'm not really a painter full stop, but I'm definitely not a quick painter. So this uh, this makes me happy as well. And the, and plus as well, these jars are fun. It's more fun than a tube. Uh, right, okay, so if I mix a little bit of this together. And if you use enough in the way of quantity, you'll still get that lovely same generous thick stroke. Look at that. Brilliant, I've almost made my emerald pencil there, haven't I? A little bit lighter. Oh, I've started to upset the masking fluid already. Right, I better paint over it. Oh, it's pulling already. Oh, that's not good. Can you see that it's lifted already? Now I'm going to have to leave that to dry and see what it does. 
While we're waiting for that to dry, I just want to have a little sort of um, kind of overview situation here. I think the box is a great idea. I think it's been executed fairly well. The noises I've been making about the masking fluid is not specific to Artful and I hate masking fluid full stop and I hate the smell of it. Um, it remains to be seen whether this masking fluid is any good or not because as I say, it was a Dale Rowney one I had last time. The, the quality of the supplies is great. I just wish they'd packaged their pencils a bit better. And we've also had this slight mishap about mislabeling the pencil or mislabeling the magazine whichever way around you want to look at it the inclusion of this um this little zine here as well is absolutely fabulous because a lot of mixed media you know involves collage work and for them to be thoughtful enough to provide that instead of just saying oh you can go and you know like look through a magazine and cut stuff out they've given you stuff that's really good as well so overall i think this box is great value for money you, there's a lot going on here and you have a lot of scope to create something like truly unique but also really really dig your claws into mixed media. I would love to know your thoughts on this box and whether or not it's something that you're into. Does it does it tickle your fancy? Um, it certainly tickles mine. <laughs> I'd also love to hear what you would like me to do. Obviously, I always do a second video and, uh, you know, really create an artwork. I really want to try the turtle, but if I do that, I'll only be using a very small portion of the supplies. But if that's something that you want to see, then you let me know down in the comments as usual and I will be happy to oblige. Okay, so just before we finish up, my masking fluid here is dry and you can see the area where I've actually put it down. Now, interestingly, the implement that I used to put it on with, I can use to take it off with as well. Um, if you just uh, rub very gently, you should be able to cut yourself into what's going on and you should be able to start to roll. And uh, yep, there we go, it's starting to come off now. So that's done a fairly good job of uh, keeping said area dry and clear of paint, or in this case ink. And this is just where the little bubbles were that had burst, so obviously the ink's been able to get in there. But even though that's happened, it still kept it away from the rest of the area. So yeah, okay, even though it's smelly and it's a bit um a bit unappetizing, the masking fluid absolutely has done its job. So yes, love to hear your thoughts in the comments, guys. Thanks very much for coming and hanging out. And I will see you back here in the cave really soon for another video. So have a great day, everyone, and bye-bye for now.